What is up, guys? This is Luke Hill for Kick Guru, back here with my partner Jazz. You say hi, Jazz. Hello. Yeah. So hopefully you checked out part one where we're building Jazz her first ever custom gaming PC. Well, gaming a bit more, I guess. That one was pretty interesting. We picked some cases, didn't we? So we mm -hmm. had quite a few. Check that out if you haven't already. But basically, in this one, we're going to be doing the actual build. So I guess we should start off by summarizing. Which cases did you pick last time? Do you remember which ones? We yeah, should, you so it right in front of you. There were there were various, weren't there, that we went through, but the the two that I liked the most was this one. So this is the NZX TH one. Yep. Um this was ideally my preferable case. I like the look of it. I call it the um what do I call it? Skyscraper. Skyscraper. Yeah, case. Look, it does look I, I see the resemblance to be fair. Yeah. Um so that that was really good, however there were some issues with that case. Yeah. But um we decided to not stick with it and to go to the safer case. Yeah, we were slightly concerned about the uh, the fire hazard issues. However, we were reliably informed by our audience that it's not really a big deal now and they're perfectly happy with the fix. So yeah. there was a vote of confidence there. With that said... So this was my second choice case and I decided to go for that because I like the, the white, the silver on the top. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a different shape. But I like I like the power button, and also I thought um, it would go quite nice with the current living dining room. So that was the choice. Really. Yeah. So this is the Cooler Master NR two hundred P, still ITX, still pretty compact, a bit more conventional in form factor, a bit better for hardware support than the H one. But I do agree with you. The H one is a really really good looking case, mm. in my opinion. I love that vertical style. It reminds me of an Xbox, the Series X, obviously the white version. Really, really good looking. So like you just said, use cases, you've got three main use cases, haven't you? So do you want to go through those three main use cases that you're thinking of? So it's basically, it was gaming, wasn't it? Yeah, so gaming, so firstly gaming, second was um, video editing, and third was to do like day-to-day -day work things for my job. So using, you know, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, yep. and so on. Yeah, so like you said, gaming, that's going to be 4K gaming, living room on the TV primarily. So we do yep. need a system that looks good, it's pretty quiet, we had all those factors. Uh, video editing, you're going to need some serious horsepower for video editing because you want to mm -hmm. learn that, 4K video editing. And then general stuff, that's completely easy, but it'd be nice if it was quiet when you're doing just general typing work and whatever. Yeah, definitely. And I think because it's going in the living room, it needs to um, be quite quiet, so we don't want that continuous whirring noise. No, we don't want the hum, it's annoying. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, um, I guess we're going to, in this one, go through the parts that we've got. You probably see a selection of them over here. We've picked a variety. We're going to see which parts Jazz wants to pick. Some of them I have picked already for you. Before anybody complains, yes, Jazz did agree that I should pick some of the parts because I know what I'm doing and hopefully you can follow our guidance here if you're a novice user and you just want to understand which parts are good parts to choose. I think just to just to explain, so I've I've never done this before, so this is like my first very first PC build, and mm -hmm. um, therefore I will take his lead. So he's not said to me, "You must use this part." Obviously, I'm just listening and following your guidance. Yeah, so we want to keep it nice and simple. So if you are a novice user who's new but wants to delve into the world of PC gaming and build your own system, it can be really daunting to pick some parts. So hopefully we've got a selection of parts here that you can just follow and get a really good gaming PC or a video editing PC, for example. Hopefully that's the case. We're not going to go too technical. You can check out our normal reviews for that. We're going to keep it nice and simple. And we're going to get Jazz to do a lot of the building work. Yeah, and I think... Initially, if I, if I was to think, right, I, I, I woke up this morning, I want to go and build my very first PC, I think it'd be really overwhelming to think about all the different um, parts that I would need. Because mm -hmm. I remember, obviously, when we when we first had our um, lizard and thinking about... Yeah, yeah, anything. These, just, uh, just like every little thing that you needed for to keep them alive. Um, it was quite tricky to follow, whereas if you just follow somebody else's advice... Mm -hmm that's preferable, so yeah. yeah. Sometimes that's a good way to, to, to go, in my opinion. So first up, anyway, I've got a pleasant surprise for you. What? And you don't actually don't know this, do you? What is it? So this is a good thing. So the reason I just said to put both of these on was to not say that, you know, put them on, on camera and everything, but good news is, we do have a fix for this case. So this riser card is actually the new fixed riser card mm. that doesn't have the, the 
fire issues or the potential fire issues. Oh, so, so, get it for me. so basically, yeah, so we can thank we can thank our contacts at NZXT for this. So basically So we're gonna use this case then. Well, this is what I'm saying now. The choice is yours. Why so didn't if you, you tell me that beforehand? Oh to surprise you. Aww. So basically, like I said, we've listened to the feedback of our audience. It seems like people are happy with the fix at this point in time and they would recommend this case. So we're happy to go with your lead on there. So the choice is yours. If you want to run with this case with the fixed riser, you can. If you want to stick with the NR200P that you chose last time, you can. But what I will do is I'll give you some pros and cons for each case. So, NZXT, you said you really like the design. You really wanted liquid cooling. That's got a built-in all-in-one liquid cooler. It should be pretty quiet because <clears throat> the design, probably not as quiet as the NR200P. However, when, in terms of RGB lighting, you're not really going to see a massive amount of RGB lighting other than bits here or there because obviously it's quite a closed off design. It does have a window, but it's a smoked window, so you're not going to see all that much RGB lighting. It's similar to that if we don't have the glass panel. Exactly. So with this one, though, obviously you've got the window, although you weren't too fond of the black strip down the side panel window. This is going to be better for cooling, a little bit better for hardware support, although in your, in your scenario it's going to be fine. However, the caveat here is for the hardware that we're going to choose today, you can't really do liquid cooling if you want the side panel window. And that's because the radiator mounts down the bottom, which is not ideal for longevity. That's just something we'll point out there. Not too technical, but we will point it out. So basically, do you want slightly better hardware support, slightly better cooling, probably a bit quieter, but you can't do liquid cooling, or there, a better looking case, you have built-in liquid cooling, and yeah, the choice is yours, okay. I guess. So you want to go with the H1, do you? Fair enough, okay. I've been dreaming about this all week. Dream about, wow, okay, that's a bit weird. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> I love I'm kidding, this case. It is a good looking case, I really do like it. Should we just yeah. get on with it? Yeah, let's get on with this, shall we? Yeah. Is, it, is this the point where you're going to elbow yeah, me and say, stop talking, stop let's talking, do Luke, it. shut up and move on? Okay. Let's talk in more doing. Okay, so now we've selected the NZXT H1. We're going to move it out of the way and we will start the build process. So, this is quite heavy. I will actually, do you want to move it over there? It's quite a heavy case, actually. Yeah, so watch your wrist, that's pretty heavy. What you can do is you can either move it over there or for now you can actually put it on the floor out no, of the we'll way. Just pop it in. Uh, so first up, we're going to start with the motherboard. So what we're going to do here is we're going to install the bits into the motherboard. And do you want to read out which one we've selected? So we're using the Aorus B5501 Pro AX gaming motherboard? Yeah, so this is a Gigabyte B550i Aorus Pro AX. So this is an ITX motherboard. It's designed to fit with the small form factor of the chassis. Really good motherboard from Gigabyte. Uh, I'm not going to go into the technical details. You can check out our reviews if you want to see that. But you can unbox that in a second. And you want to see which processor we've chosen. Yeah, so one of my favourites is top. the AMD Ryzen 5. And why is this your favourite? 6600X. Lots of power. The, okay, fair enough. Yeah, you saved that one nicely. So yeah, we've got the Ryzen 5 5600X. We basically re regarded this as probably the best AMD processor currently for price versus performance, just for overall balance. Really, really good chip. You can check out our full review of this if you want more information and more details. Obviously, this goes with the B550 motherboard. That's AM4. Do you want me to unbox it? By all means, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, welcome to unbox it. I can't just... listen to you talk all the time. That's fine. No, no, no. Most people say that, actually, to be fair. Right, let's just let's just chuck it in, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Is there anywhere I shouldn't touch this now? No. So you sh you should be careful it's with got lots static. Of pins. Yeah. So you should be careful with regards to static. If this is an anti-static bag. One thing you want to be careful. You can get an anti-static bracelet, or you can uh, touch a plugged-in piece of metal, and that should ground you. Keep the box because obviously there's a bunch of accessories in there that we will come back to. Right. So how do I get this in there then? So first things first. Oops, I've knocked some of the bits out. So that goes in there. But what we're going to do first of all is we're actually going to build into the motherboard first. And that's because it's easier to just build some of the bits like the processor and the memory and the SSD into the motherboard outside of the case. And then you can slot it in all as one unit. So actually... Put some plastic on there. Yep, yeah, so you're welcome to that. Oh, go on. Do the glorious peel. Do the glorious. That is one of the worst peels I think I've ever seen. <laughs> that is dreadful. No, don't stick it to me. What are you doing? Be right. God's sake, it's stuck all over me. I See, that's, I would have I would have just straight away put that in. So we're going to put the AMD into it. 
Yeah, so we're going to put the processor into the motherboard first of all, and then we'll install the memory, we'll install the SSDs, and then we'll stick it into the chassis. So we do have to be careful here. So I'm just going to show you how to do this first of all. So this is the AMD Ryzen 5. This is the uh, 5000 series chips or 5600X. And like all current AMD processors for this mainstream lineup, you have many, many pins on the back. So that's about 1300 pins off the top of my head. Should we put the sticker on? Uh, you can put the sticker on the chassis if you want, or we can do it at oh, the I was going to put it on there. No, you don't put it on there. No, 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 no. And I'll explain why, because this is going to produce quite a lot of heat, maybe 100 watts of heat. It needs to be cooled properly, so good job you picked liquid cooling for this one. It does come with a box cooler, but we're not going to use that. It's not, it's not the best, to be honest. But like I say, you've got a bunch of pins on the back, and these are quite fragile. And if you bend or break any of those, you do risk killing your chips. So I thought you were going to say killing yourself. No, there's no, there's no power going through them, so no, we're, we're absolutely fine there. So even though, okay, we would happily recommend AMD or Intel for novice builders, it depends on your usage, do be very, very careful when you're building with AMD. So if you grab that very, please don't drop this, we've only got one. So what you'll see is a little gold notch on the underside, and then that matches up with the, go with the notch on the motherboard. So the first thing we have to do we'll on an AMD so motherboard, lift make sure up. you hold that tight, well done. So you lift up, that's basically the retention socket. And then you want to line up the gold notch with the notch on the motherboard. And then you want to drop it in with no pressure. So you, you don't drop it, you basically place it on, sorry, no pressure and it should fall into position. So if you just give it a little wiggle to see if that falls in very, very gently, don't push it, don't push it. So let me just check if you've done that correctly. So. Okay, that didn't quite line up correctly. So do you want to have another go? So basically, you just put Take it in. Take two. And I've well, let me try it again then. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm just trying to show you. So basically, you just drop it in. You don't want to wiggle it back and forth and risk bending the pins. You just want to drop it into position. I can't do this with my bad left wrist. So let me come across with the right. Probably block the camera, but we're going to have to do it. So you just drop it in a position. And then push this down. Yeah, and then you drop that down. So if you want to give that a go, because it is it is good to give it a go and to give oh, it a sample. you want me to do it again? Yeah, so if you want to just pull it out, and again, like I say, just make, well, so that, that's clicked out. So with no pressure, just drops in, just nice and stable. Oh, well done. That was very good, actually. Yeah. There you go. Well done. Nice. <laughs> Okay, so that's the CPU installed. So next up, we've got our memory, and I think this is really nice and easy to install next. So, is do you this see RAM? Which? This is RAM, yeah, RAM, memory, whatever you want to so call this it. This is the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro SL High Performance DDR for Explain two times best. 16 gigabytes, so then that equates to 32 gigabytes. Yep. So basically, this is 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz memory. So good high-speed memory. 32 gigabytes will be plenty for gaming, for video editing. See, this is what I put in, into my last computer. Because I, well, I didn't, I've not built one before, but I needed some more memory, like in the last video. And this yep. is the point where it smoked. Yes. If it's not plugged in, then it shouldn't smoke today. Absolutely not. So this is perfectly fine. So Corsair Vengeance, really good memory. If you want more details, check out our full in detailed review. And this, if you want to read that, if you want to have a look at the RGB. box. RGB. Vengeance. So, Where does this go? Let me show oh, you what to do. Here. So first of all, though, you back. can see these latches. Well done, yeah. So you can pull these latches. So they're basically just retention latches. You can open those up. And then importantly here, you want to line up the notch. So the notch in the motherboard with the notch in the RAM. So, that way, that way. so line it up and check which way it goes. And because it's ITX, so it's only two slots and we're installing two six sticks, we don't really need to worry about which slots that we do have to install in. If you're installing two memory sticks and your motherboard's got four slots, check the motherboard manual to which ones you should be installing. So what you want to do now is that's lined up. Are you happy with the position of the notch? Yep, so then you just evenly put pressure down and it will click into place. So go on, it can, it, no, it's a bit firm. In. No, it's a bit firm. It's, it's fine. Hacking, yeah, it's not. So let me, do you want me to show you? No, no, you can do it. So go on, put your pressure down. Excellent. Well Ooh, done. Perfect. And now you can do the power. next one. And one thing I like about these Corsair modules is if you see, they've got a sticker on the back with all the boring specs, but actually all the fancy stuff is on the right side, which you probably will see. So I do like these Corsair Vengeance modules. Are you happy with that? With the no, lineup? No, I'm not happy with that. Right, okay, if you line up there, so I think you're a little bit out this side. Yeah, so if you, perfect. So if you're happy with that, push it down. Excellent. So there is our memory installed. Lovely. 32 gigs of high speed memory. Fantastic. So we've got our, let me, I need to try and remember all the parts. We've got okay. the motherboard, the CPU. CPU processor, processor, whatever you want to call it. And then my memory. Okay, yeah. RAM, CPU, motherboard. Excellent, yeah. 
solid state drive, so really high speed storage device. And this is basically your long term storage, so for Windows we can install on here, <laughs> your, your games, your photos, etc. Is this so, it? We've actually got two SSDs, and the reason we've got two SSDs, so this is going to be the one that we'll install Windows on. So do you want to explain which one that is? So this is a Western Digital? Western Digital, Digital yeah. WD? Yep, that's it, yeah. Um, and this is a black SN750? Yep, so this is basically an M.2 NVMe SSD, and like I said, I'm not going to go overly technical on this, but this is a good drive. This is Where does this fast, go? and then do you want to check your secondary drive as well? So basically we've got you two drives. So this is the um, WD Black SN 850. Yep. So 750, 850. Yep. So you've got the 750, which is a really good drive, pretty fast. And you've got the 850, which is an even better drive. And that is ludicrously fast. This one is really, really quick. Let's put it in then. So I, I don't even know where this goes. We'll show you. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to check the motherboard manual at this point, And I have checked in advance to make sure which SSD goes in the correct mm -hmm. slot. And even though we want to build this like a novice, uh, kind of um, just a novice guide for, you know, new users who don't have all that much technical detail, this is really quite important here if you want to get full speed from your drive. I so think it's I, in that box. Yep, yeah, so I've already checked it. And basically, because this is a high speed, this is called PCIe Gen 4. So this is a new high speed SSD. That goes into the front slot. And then this older, slower one goes into the back slot on the motherboard because that's an older, slower port. So oh, it goes at the back? Yep, so that's oh. all the details you know. Is on this motherboard in particular, the slower one on the back, the faster one on the front. So the slower one is this one. So we put that yep. one in first? So I, I think, uh, yeah, you can put that one in first if you want. We will have to check that it does actually fit with this heat sink. So you probably see that actually there's a screw in place that you need to remove first of all. So you remove this screw. Where? There. So if you just remove that screw, yeah. Lefty loosey. Lefty. Righty tighty. Hold on. Left. Left. I'm going left. Yeah, but you're going anti-clockwise. It's not lefty, is it? Is that left? Left. I'm it depends, to depends the on your reference point, I to guess. To the left. To the left. Everything you own in the box to the left. Well, this one doesn't seem to come out. Nope. So that's the standoff that it sits on. So if you want to slot that in, like you just did, again, line up the notch, push it in, and then we can screw it down. Yeah. Go on, line it up. Yeah. And then flatten it off and push it in. Oh, God, that's so gonna break. No, so, oh, so you want to just flatten it off. So let me let me show you. So basically, this one you want to kind of come in at this angle, and yep, yeah, you're absolutely spot on. So what we've just found is with this motherboard in particular, it doesn't fit. It doesn't actually fit because this has got a nice big heatsink on there. We don't want that that one anyway, do we? Because it's a slower one. So what we will do? Well, we ideally. So if you leave it off, and what I'll do is I'll just quickly grab another one off the shelf. So this is. Uh, this is uh, basically just a generic one at this point. So we'll use this one to show you how to install it, but I will switch this out for another one of these WD Black SN750s that I've got with an operating system already on there. So Will it fit? Yeah, so I've got another one of these without the heat sink on. So it's with just small. So this heat sink is this big bulky piece of metal. If you're buying an SSD yourself, even if you're a novice user, this is good for cooling, keeps the drive running ra nice and fast, even if you're really hitting it quite hard with gaming or with video editing. And then what we'll do is we'll install this one without the heat sink, just to show you how it's done on the back side. So that's right, so just push it in, it'll kind of click, perfect. So it Ooh. clicks into position, it flicks out, that's by design, so then you can get your screw just to fasten it down. Perfect, yep. Yeah. So remember, when you're screwing things in in a PC, you don't really need, so just make sure you line up that screw, you never really need to screw most things in with much pressure. So just nice and easy, finger tightened. I wouldn't recommend using like a drill or a mechanical screwdriver. I know some of the Americans use a mechanical screwdriver. So make sure your screws lined up properly. Fun. Yeah, there you go. You never need to tighten things too much, except your CPU cooler. That usually needs to be quite tight and maybe your motherboard into the chassis. But when you're dealing with small, fragile SSDs or a CPU so or I'm memory. Turn this now. Yeah, you never need to tighten things too much. So just bear that in mind. So what we'll do, perfect. So we've got a nice big heat sink on this one. So gigabyte actually. So here Western Digital has applied a heat sink to the SSD. Here, Gigabyte supplied a big slab of metal which will give some cooling onto the motherboard. And this is a really good feature of the Gigabyte motherboards. So having fun here. Yeah, I know you're doing lots of um, you know, kind of hand work with I've the never screws, done aren't this you? Before. Yeah, you do very well. So basically this oh, look is look at the size of that. Yeah, there is a big screw. Wow, okay. My word. It's quite big, isn't it? 
like a big standoff. They're like M2 or something. I don't know. No one cares about screws. James knows about James screws. Will James know. will know. Leo knows about screws as well. He's good with screws and things. Leo knows about pin cases. Leo will be knowing about pin cases very soon. Check out part one if you don't know what on earth we're talking about there. So well done. You've unscrewed the heatsink. Very nice indeed. You've now got another heatsink underneath oh there. Oh my goodness. Screw. Yep. So it's Gigabyte. Like trying to find the treasure. Yeah, no, it's a pirate's treasure. So Gigabyte does a really good job here. They apply Ooh. some heat sinks so they keep your drive running nice and cool, which is good for his health and good for his speed. That's all you need to know. There you go. So if you install the SSD like we just did, perfect. So line up the notch, slide it into position. Perfect. So you hear that click. It's still flapping out of place. What you can see this time is, be careful there. So what you've noticed is, if you check that, so you need to Pull peel this plastic protection off. So that you will actually, yeah, go on. Give us a glorious YouTube peel. Oh, yes. Yes. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh, that is a dreadful ending to <laughs> an otherwise glorious peel. I haven't got time for that. Disappointing. I right. give that a 5 out of 10. Um, right, so this, oh, it's sticky. It is sticky because the thermal pad. So actually, I think I might have, no, I think I might have guided you incorrectly here. Sorry. So I think with this one, what we have, ha actually have to do is pull this secondary mount off. Do you know what I'm going to do at this point, actually? I'm going to consult the manual. So here you go. So there's the M.2. So before install an M.2 SSD, loosen the screw from the heatsink. Remove the PCH heatsink. So remove it. Locate Step the two. proper mounting hole. And then tighten the standoff first. So I think what's happened here... I don't understand these instructions. Right, okay. So basically, just the mounting hole and the standoff. You can check the images if you need to as well. So I think what's happened here... So we've got a standoff there, so... Again, this will just depend very much based on which motherboard you're choosing. Like I say, this is slightly more difficult than um. It's so like one of the slightly more. Off? I don't know if we do. If I'm being perfectly honest, but I think there you go. That's so now nice. you can see that fits into position perfectly. So now you can just screw that standoff back in, and that little small standoff, that piece of metal, is just there, so you can get really good coverage with the heat spreaders. So these heat sinks. No, you can just finger tighten it in. Perfect. Now you can put that back on there. Like you said, that's got a sticky thermal pad, so it'll transfer heat very nicely. Get, my get your small screw, screw. Get my screwdriver. Yep. Let's just line that up. I'll screw that in. Yeah. Right, let's put this bad boy back on. Yep, so make sure you line it up. So. I think it was going the other way, actually. Perfect, yep. Don't forget your, um. what did The Verge call these? I think The Verge called these tweezers. They look like the things you have in the dentist. Yeah, not tweezers. You, uh, They're not tweezers. Exactly! The Verge! Who's the Verge? <laughs> the, <laughs> never mind. I sincerely hope the audience know, the audience will know. Perfect. So you've screwed that in properly. Lovely. Fantastic. Let's so get rid of that. What's next? So we're basically done on the motherboard front at this point. Oh, so we can put this in here now? Yes. So if you were using a CPU cooler, you could install the CPU cooler at this point, but we're using a liquid cooler, not an A CPU cooler. Has this got a liquid cooler already installed? So that's got the liquid cooler already installed. So at this point, we'll install the motherboard, we'll connect up the liquid cooler, we'll move on to the graphics card, and then we will uh, see what's next. This is the point. Um, so what I'm going to do now, actually, is just grab some of the bits out of the motherboard box that we need. So the key component that we need is going to be, that's the wireless antenna aerial, if you like. What's this for? Then? That's for Wi-Fi. So it plugs into the aerial and that gives you a really strong Wi-Fi signal. You don't need to worry about that yet, because once it's installed in the case, you'll, so you don't need to install that yet. And then, just because this is a, an ITX motherboard, so a small motherboard and a really high-end one, Gigabyte's given us an additional cable where we can have an additional fan header to connect one of our fans to if we like. So we'll just bear that in mind. Keep we'll have a look here. on the slot to see if we actually need to use that. So uh, I can't see any slots where we need to use that. So we've got one fan header there. That could plug into your chassis fan, for example. We've got a CPU, uh, potentially a CPU fan header there. So I think that's probably enough fan headers. And then there's another breakout cable. So hopefully that's not too technical and not too um, confusing. But basically, again, just consult your manual. So let me just show you. So they'll, I don't even know if that's the right one actually. Yeah, so there's a little notch on the motherboard. Just pop that in there. And we've got an additional fan head if you we need You know the one. motherboard manual? Yep. Does it have, does it tell you exactly where you need to put everything? It does, so let me show you. It's a very good question actually. Because if I saw that and you weren't here, I would be thinking, wow. There you go. So you've basically got a point in the motherboard so it shows everything. So what you can see is I just plugged it into this SysFan2 header down there. 
and you can basically see that that looks very similar to the cable there. So we'll explain it. So here you can see CPU fan. So if you line okay. that up on the motherboard, so point to where the CPU fan is on the motherboard, if you can see from that diagram. CPU fan there. Perfect, yes. Yeah, so you want to hold it up and show it. So, that's the, so obviously that's the big power connector. CPU fan? No, that's the power connector. CPU power connector. CPU, CPU fan, fan is the little is header next to it, yeah. So bear that in mind because we need to connect our liquid cooler. And then we've got another fan header down there called Sys Fan 1. So can you spot that one? Four pin fan header. Yeah, just here. Yep. Yeah. So that's where we're probably going to connect our pump for our all-in-one liquid cooler. So here is where the fun begins. So if you want to spin it around, first of all, I'll just put this motherboard over here. Done. And then basically get it in your case. Again, check the manual on the case, but there's usually going to be like a hand grip or something on the front side that you pull the panel out. So absolutely. It's so on the front side. So, okay, this is a cuboid case, so it doesn't really have a front, front side as such. Um, ah! Perfect. Yeah. So you pop that out. Fantastic. Usually in a, in a standard case, you'll have some thumb screws on the back that you want to remove for the panels. That's absolutely fine. Not the case here. And then if we do the same Not the on the... Not case here. <laughs> oh, that's pun believable. <sighs> so if you want to just swivel this around and you can do the same on the other side. So I'll help you. This is a heavy boy. Yeah, just watch out because this is glass. Yeah, perfect. Put these panels safe when you're not using oh, this them. This is so there heavy. Go. Yeah, because it's got a power supply and a liquid cooler. So yeah. And then here with the NZXTH one, you basically just want to grab both sides and slide it up. So this actually just slides up. So... Um, so what basically just there? this this frame, let me show you. So there, can you see it moving? Uh, so you slide that up, quite a bit of pressure. Perfect, yeah, I'll hold it down to me too. Oh my God, this is heavy. Yeah, so, right, I just realized the elbow's just gonna whack me straight in the jaw. It's uh, <laughs> hard work. Uh, I am not, I'm not actually that weak. All right, okay, hold on. There you go, there you go, perfect. So that's coming up, I think you got your hair stuck. Uh, that is tough, isn't it? Uh, right, there you go, so put that one to one side. Uh, I'd leave that standing up if I were you. Perfect. Yeah, jump on the floor actually, it's just in the way a little bit. And then usually what you'll get is basically a box. So I'll grab this box out for you. And these are going to be all the screws and all the accessories and the bits that come with your chassis. So we'll keep that to one side. Remove screws pointed by arrows and lift to open. Okay. I've never actually worked with this case, so this so is going to be fun for me So actually we shouldn't have done too. that. I think we should have... Taking those out first. Yeah, that's fine. So on this ends an XT case. So Luke see. doesn't like to follow instructions, and I'm like I'm a really big instruction manual person. Be gone with that one. Right. Oh goodness me! It's like a doctor's prescription. Now I will say, obviously, this build is a little bit different because it's the case, it's the power supply, and the liquid cooler. Typically, they'd all be separate parts, but for this particular build, then you do get a power cord because the power supply is installed. Yeah, let's just wing it. We'll if we put it, to, put it to the side, so... Okay, as long as you it's can reach that. too much to have on the desk. Can't yeah. deal with a messy workspace. Let me just put some of these bits out of the way then. So I think first and foremost, what we will do is we will get the motherboard installed. So it looks like on the NZXT case, what does that say there? I can actually read it from Remove this angle. Remove screws pointed by arrows. So there's the two screws pointed by the arrows. And lift to open, check for cable and tube clearance when closing. Do not force shut. Okay, no, you're going to use the screwdriver. So Why? I'm going to use the screwdriver because this is the correct one. And while you're doing that, I've just quickly grabbed the other SSD to switch out, like we said, the non heat synced version. So I'm going to quickly switch that one out. <gasps> Where did that go? I don't know. It didn't go in the power supply, did it? Did it go in there? I don't know, I couldn't see. Because if you went in there, that's a bad day. D did it go in there? I don't know, it just dropped. Right, okay, we'll have a look now. So, <laughs> I guess at this point I'll highlight, if you drop a screw inside your power supply, do not go prodding things in there, not a magnetic screwdriver, nothing. You do not want to mess around with power supplies because they do have components in there that carry electricity even when switched off, so be very, very careful. Oh no, I'm really sad. Well, hopefully it didn't go inside the power supply. Well, it must have. Well, did it? You would have seen it. Well, it, it just fell. I couldn't see it. Okay, so we'll have a look. So we just rotate this out of the way for now. Oh, that's a cool design. Hoping the screw went down here somewhere. Ah, I think I can feel it. Can I? All right, let me lift this up a sec. Just tip it upside down. Um, 
Does it sound like it's inside the power supply? <laughs> um, okay. What does that mean? Yeah, we can't, we can't do it inside the power supply. We have to switch cases. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm actually serious, yeah. Alright, so we're going to grab these bits out of the way. So if you, if you drop a screw in the power supply, you can't use the cable? Correct. You can't use the power supply because it would be dangerous to try and fish it out. So what we can do but is... I think we might just be able to put our finger in there. No, you can't. You can't. There's, there's stuff in there that will cause serious harm to you. Do not go prodding inside power supplies. So I think we'll pause for this moment and we will find out where, where the screw went. Minor crisis avoided. We did have a screw drop inside the power supply. If you're doing this and you're an obvious user, do not prod anything in there like a magnetic screwdriver trying to fish out the screw because that can be quite dangerous. Obviously a power supply is electrical. I know what I'm doing with regards to power supplies. I can dismantle it a bit. So I did manage to save it, but just be very, very careful. But what? I was ready to put the screwdriver in there. Yeah, so actually, kind of all jokes so aside. So actually maybe it's a good teaching point. So that's actually quite a good lesson that if you do accidentally drop something inside the power supply, then well, basically, just be careful. Crisis avoided for now. So let's carry on <laughs> with the build. Obviously, like I've said, we've already got the power supply installed. 650 watt unit. We were going to use this Corsair 750 watt SFX unit if we did use the Cooler Master build. However, we've already got the NZXT one in there. Basically, yeah. you're just going to take my advice here. The 650 watts is going to be fine. So what we can do now with this case, we flipped the radiator out of position. So obviously, this was unscrewed. You flip it out of position. And that gives you nice, clean access to be able to install the motherboard. So let's go what are and these? do that. So these are actually the tubing. So this is the tubing for the liquid coolant. Ooh. So you've got a liquid in there, not necessarily water, but some form of coolant liquid in there. And it basically just pumps through these tubes. So you get, obviously, the flow goes through to the radiator. Can't hear anything. No, because they're probably filled quite nicely up top. So that's fine. So if we just rotate those out of position, try not to bend those too much or try to stretch let's them. Let's get the motherboard So obviously in. there is liquid in there. But yeah, let's go with the motherboard install. So what you want to do okay, here, first and foremost, is... That's a very good question. But what you want to do first and foremost is you want to just move out all the cables out of the way. So obviously you're not going to install over the top of other cables. So if we just Plus move it's those. not falling. Perfect, yeah. I'm glad nothing's falling out there. And now, in terms of direction, then what you want to do at this point is, if you show the rear I.O., so there are all the ports on the back, you want to make sure the rear I.O. lines up in the correct position. Now, because we're using a non-standard case, the NZXT H1, we know that the rear I.O. is going to line up here on the back panel. Also, at this point, one of the most common PC building mistakes is forgetting to put the rear I.O. shield in and then installing everything and realizing you haven't got the rear I.O. shield. Because we've got a really premium motherboard from Gigabyte, we don't have to worry because it's already got the rear I.O. shield You could have told me in. when I was trying to get it in there that it doesn't go that, that way. I actually didn't know. I don't really know which way it goes. It must go this way So then. basically, yeah, just watch out for the cables. You can see these little standoffs and they will line up with the screw holes on the motherboard. So you can just, if I just pull some of these cables out of the way for you, push in, yep, they're out of the way. So you just push it in and then rest it on those standoffs. There we go. And that looks pretty good to Where me. Where are the screws? Happy with that, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So just check your standoff line up, very nice, but well why done. why haven't we filled in every single bit of this then? Of the motherboard? Yeah. Well, we will fill in some more bits. But also, we don't need to fill in absolutely everything. So if, for example, you don't have a SATA drive, we've got NVMe SSDs instead, then you're going to have to connect all the ports. Which ones are we using? So we're going to use the small ones that look like they fit in there. Ones. Let me have a look. Um, no, I don't think it's those ones. So again, at this point, you would usually consult your manual, but we're not going to bother. Um. Um, Maybe we should consult the manual. Give me a selection of screws and then I'll choose. Can you just pop them out? No, 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 they'll go everywhere. Let me try one of these. Right, let's have a look. So I think it's going to be... Ah, I'm dropping screws everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I think it's don't one of those. Don't put them in the power supply. Yeah, don't drop them into the power supply. We've learned that already, haven't we? Let's put those back in. How are you supposed to screw this? So it's going to be difficult because difficult of the angle. So try a different one first, maybe. Can be a little bit finicky. Do you want to try this one first? You can help me. There's yeah. four to do. Okay, so should we take one each? Yeah. Oh, you've got the wrong size screwdriver. That's why it's difficult. So you better off with this side. There you go. Have that one. So. Oh, there's one on the end. Yeah, put it on there for you. 
Such help, aren't I? So yeah, that's one critical thing as well, is make sure you get the right size screwdriver. And it's worth buying a good screwdriver if you're going to be uh, messing out around with your PC quite often. Uh, it sounds basic and it sounds kind of obvious, but you know, it's not. Should get some Kikuru themed scre screwdrivers. It is a good idea. Actually, yeah, tell us in the comments section below if you'd like to see that. That would be nice. That's a very good idea, yeah. Have a nice Kikuru screwdriver. Right, is that screwed in well? You happy with that? Yeah. Perfect, well done. So <coughs> now you t ch generally want to do an across pattern. Diagonals. Yeah, so you do diagonals. I'm going to cover the power supply this time so we don't have any uh, little accidents again. I think you, you aged right about corner. 10 years then, didn't you? Probably, yeah, probably more. No, so if you want to come in from whichever angle, probably further, if you go in from... How am I in? Okay, fair enough. As long as you're happy with that angle. No, no, it's not working. Right, okay, so if you want to come oh, in from a different neck. angle... Do you want me to help you here? Yes, please. So ideally, what you do, actually, is just rotate the case around a little bit. But what I can see is happening there is that the alignment hasn't perfectly lined up. So what we will do is we'll just push the motherboard for the alignment, and then you can see now that the hole is over the standoff. So if you want to try again, oh, you've got two screws attached. Do I need two? One is plenty. Yeah, perfect. So just remember, just come in, Whoa. whichever's comfortable, whatever makes sense. There you go. I'll be honest, we probably should have rotated the case at this point to make it easier for you. I know, I feel like I'm go bending in all sorts of ways. I'm giving you a challenge, okay? There we go. Well done, perfect. On now to we've the got, next one. Yeah, can you spot the next one over there? So you can go top left or you can go bottom right. What do you prefer? Top left. Top left, let's go. Yep, top left. It's like my shooting in football. Top Ooh. left. Top left, yeah. Bottom right. Perfect. Excellent, yep. And final Ooh, one. Physical work, this. I know, I know. Of course, if you're using a different case and a bigger motherboard, you'll generally have more screws to put in. But for us here, just the four screws because we're using a small motherboard so it doesn't need all that much retention. Happy with that? I just tried helping you and I think I made it worse. I know, you've just you put your big thumb in the way, hun. Uh, bring the screwdriver from a different angle wherever it's comfortable. Oh, there you go, perfect, yeah. Is that tight? Yeah. Let me just check Ooh. those for you. If we're cool. Give them a quick check. Perfect, good job, fantastic. So there, our motherboard is in place now. So what we can start doing next at this point now... RGB! We don't need to do the RGB because the RGB is actually built into our components. So built into the motherboard, built into the RAM, for I example. It was on the fans. We'll come to that. We will come to that. So what we can do now is we can start connecting up some of the cables. So oh, the power yeah, yeah. connectors. SATA so, cables. Yep. Yeah, we don't need any SATA cables, but this power connector, remember it goes up there, so if you can lean across and see that. Basically a four plus four. So this is the CPU power connector. You want to try and bridge those together, so just join them together, or do them one by one, whatever's comfortable for you. Perfect, yeah, that's looking good. It's my hair. Good job, yeah, that's one in. They are a little bit fiddly, some of these cables. Again, it's nothing to be concerned about, especially if you're a first time builder. Just they are a bit fiddly, so just have a bit of patience. Just give it a few goals if you need to. Woo! And there you go, perfect. Oh. Whoops, almost set the shelves down, nice. <laughs> so there's your uh, CPU power co connector. Yeah. Now you've got the big 24 pin power it's connector. My hair. Is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it hard work? A little bit flustered, yeah. <laughs> so now you've got the big 24 pin, so this oh, big beast. Yep, yeah, so that plugs into the motherboard. Can you see it? That's only going to go in one direction. It's got a clip on one direction, so. Favourite band. One Direction. Excuse me. <laughs> I, did, I said One Direction, not G-Unit. <laughs> right. Oh, it's very fiddly. Yeah, so these cables can be a little bit fiddly. I'll be perfectly honest, if you're building a bigger PC, it's usually quite easy. Can we get some flex on these cables? Yeah, you can. Oh. It's usually quite easy if you're building a bigger PC, but this is one of the challenges with Mini ITX, and I think it's a fun challenge, especially if the, uh, the layout and the performance pays dividends at the end. So it is a little bit fiddly. You need small hands. Yeah, it's not ideal for my uh, big shovel hands. It doesn't always click into position, but you can usually tell if it's in. So perfect, that's in. So what we will do next is we will install, uh, we've got USB, so this is USB 3, for front panel, USB 3. We've got USB, this is 
let me just say that, USB-C for front panel USB-C. However, you did say last time, didn't you, that you weren't interested in front panel USB-C, and that's good because this motherboard doesn't actually support front panel USB-C. So we'll just leave this cable dangling for now, and we'll bear in mind the front panel port doesn't actually work for USB-C with this, this motherboard. I'm putting this in the USB-3 labelled one. Yeah, so that's basically the big... Oh, it says USB 3.2. Yeah, so USB, whoops, USB 3 or 3.1, whatever, or 3.2 Gen 1, it's all the same, it's just annoying labelling by the manufacturers, but basically if it looks like it fits, it probably should fit, and again, consult the manual if you really need to. Oh, I wish this would get out of the way. Perfect. Oh, you almost elbowed me in the face then. It's not in yet. <laughs> Isn't it? So, with the USB, let me just show you. So what you want to do is you want to line up the notch, if you lined up the notch correctly. So there's basically a notch on the connector and a notch on the slot, and you want to line those up correctly. Try not to put too much side it's side. It's whether or not it's the wrong way round. So there's the notch. Where's the notch? the notch on there. So just check for the notch on your other board. Yeah, it was the right way. Perfect, yeah. So it's notch facing that way. And then you just want to push it downwards if you can. Try not to move it too much left and right, because you could end up bending the pins. And that sounded like a good click into position. I didn't even hear a click. Yep. That's, no, that's, I'm, I'm happy with that. It's not all the way in though. It doesn't have to go all the way in, so as long as the pins make connection. Yep, that's absolutely fine. Well done. Ooh. Very good job. So this is, like I just said, that's front panel USB-C. We're not going to be using that because the motherboard doesn't support it and you already said you're not really very so interested where's this in it. Go? Just so basically there. what you want to do, yeah, if you've got any unused cables, just try and put them in a position where they're out of the way. They're not contacting anything it? else. Oh, good job, yeah, you can strap it if you want. Where well, they're not contacting anything else, they're kind of out of the way. They're not interfering with any fans uh, and just leave them there basically. This is a HD audio. So HD audio, again, check your motherboard manual if you need to. I'll give you a clue, that's bottom left. And I'll be perfectly honest, obviously building a PC, when you get a bit more experienced, but even for novices, it's not really that difficult a task, so it's not something to be scared of. So now you've got the front panel cable, so let me just have a look at those. So that's your... So it's, it's kind of the same as the audio one. Yeah, so this is the front panel cable. So this is going to be for all your different uh, connectors. So like your power switch and your LEDs on the front. And what you want to do is you just want to line this up with the front panel connectors on your motherboard, which I believe are going to be... Oh, it's there. It's that white one down there. And this will vary in positioning from motherboard Well, I should have put this in before the other one. I completely agree, yeah. <laughs> But because it's a little bit confined, it's a... Uh, ah, right, here we go. So we might have an accessory that actually helps you out here. So we've got an extender if you want to use that. Right. We'll try without it. No, here you go. We can have a go with this extender. Let's just try first. Actually, no. So you want to use this extender. No, we can have to use this extender. Because mm -hmm. it actually changes some of the positions. So <clears throat> with the front panel, you get HDD, LED... You get power switch and you get power LED. So these are basically connectors to allow your actual front panel buttons and your LEDs on the front panel to actually work. So what you want to do is you just want to plug these into your motherboard. I'll be perfectly honest. If I'd known we had a breakout cable like this, I would have said to plug these in before putting the motherboard in. And then what you want to do is just go into your motherboard manual, check for the front panel USB positioning or the front panel cables positioning, and then basically just see where it lines up. Okay, so I've quickly inserted those front panel cables. Like I say, I should have done this outside of the case, but I didn't realize. The front panel extension cable effectively from the motherboard is installed. So if you want to connect the case one to the extension, really good that NZXT supplies this. So you basically just want to line up the cables. Um, you probably should, again, check the manual, which way this goes, actually. Yeah, you're teaching me not to read the manual here. Yeah, do as I say, not as I do, is that, is that the saying? And then what you want to do is basically, when you've got cables like this, just tuck them out the of the way. The cable management's a bit messy, to be honest. Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, yeah, okay. It could be better, you know, James, Leo, those guys, they do a good job. But we'll do what we can here. The main thing to remember is as long as the cables are not going to touch the fans and interfere with the fans, that's the key thing, really. How do they do it nicely, then? Well, you can use some, like, zip ties and tie-down points. But for this small case, it's quite constrictive with regards to the cable. And thankfully, NZXT is pre-wired a lot. So that is your fan cable. So what you want to do is, if you just check that, so is there only one cable? So actually, I've made a mistake there, sorry. So, Again? Yes, I have, sorry. So here we've got this nice braided cable. This is a four pin cable, and this is connected to the fan. So this is your fan cable. And because we're going to use this for the CPU fan, you want to connect this to the CPU fan header. 
So if, for example, you had a chassis fan, you try and connect that to your chassis fan headers because it has different speeds, basically. So you'll have a nice quiet system with good cooling when you need it. So remember, we checked in the manual where the CPU fan header is. So if we just jump back and have a look. Yeah, you, I, you've lost me a little bit. I've lost you. So basically now you're connecting the CPU fan. CPU fan. So I've already done that. No, you've connected the CPU power. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it goes in, so there's little grooves on one side of the connector, and they go in with a little block that's sticking up on the actual fan header. Perfect, yep. Yeah. And like usual, you don't need too much force. Yep, yeah. yeah, that's fine. And then you've got here, <coughs> this is a slightly different fan header, so this is for your water cooling pump. So that can go in any of your other fan headers. So for example, this one with the cable that we, uh, that we broke out earlier. That's got four and this has got three. That's okay, so you can put a three pin fan into a four pin header, that's perfectly fine. You just get slightly different speed control, but that's perfectly fine here. And remember the, the notch lines up with the uh, notches in the block. Yeah, there you go. So just line it up and then insert it. So perfect. Yep, slide it into place. Excellent. So that means now that our liquid cooling pump unit is connected and our liquid cooling fan is connected on the liquid cooler. So perfect. Yes. At this point now, what you will notice is this has got an basically it's an Intel bracket on here, but we've got an AMD motherboard with an AMD processor. So at this point, we need to quickly switch out the bracket because they have a slightly different mounting style. So what we will do here is again, you want to check the oh, instructions. So this is this is for an Intel processor. Yes, but because we're using <gasps> an AMD, AMD processor, we'll switch it out. Yeah. So if you want to just pull this along, so you don't need to screw anything. No, you don't need to screw these. So what you can see here is it's basically just a push mechanism. So here, you're just going to pull this one out. No, you want to pull this one out first, pull the entire one out. So just pull it along. Not too much force. Yeah, that's it. So just give it a bit of a pull to your hand. Perfect, yeah. So it will be a little bit stiff because obviously you're putting quite a bit of pressure on when you're mounting it. That's absolutely fine. And then you just pop that one into place until it clicks. I think it should click. Oh, cool. Perfect, yep, as long as that's in place. Where's this going for Force. And then what would happen at this point is we would basically turn and mount it on the processor and then screw it into position. You do need some slightly different mounting bits for the AMD processor. But where does it screw in? So what you'll see is you've got a little latch mechanism here. So this will go there. That screw coming out will go through one of these holes and then you will actually use a thumb screw to tie it down. So you can see that's how it goes. We're not going to do I it right now. need one on the other side though. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So you need one on the other side too. So if I grab you, so there's one. Why are we not doing it right now? Because, firstly, we have to put thermal paste on the CPU. This is going to be fun. So, so shall I stop? So at this point, yeah, you'll stop and we'll put some thermal paste on the processor. Yes. So if you want to pass me, the, James there you go. James showed us a good way of doing that, didn't he? He did, yeah. With James a has a, yeah, with a little sticker tracing. That was um, a fantastic really? method. No. We, no, we haven't. So. Perfect. Right, so where's the thermal paste? Three screws. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab some tissue, which I conveniently got here because I've got such a bad cold, probably seen tissue hidden all over me at some point, but... That's the way it is. I'm Horrifying. the only person who would get a cold in the summer, but yeah, that's the way it is. So we're just going to give the, excuse me, just going to give the processor a little bit of a wipe, just to get any grubby finger grease off oh, there. Oh, look at that. Perfect, yeah, so you've got some remnant thermal paste off there. Of course, you've got a brand new processor, you've been touching it with your fingers, just want to rub a bit of that grease off there. You can use a bit of alcohol, you can use something more professional. You probably should use some lint-free paper, but toilet roll is, is good, just don't, you know, don't get little bits going everywhere. So that looks pretty good and pretty shiny to me. You've done a good job there. It's still doing. Have I put my toilet roll for my cold back out of the way? Perfect. I hope I don't catch this cold. And then you can just chuck that somewhere. So let me see if I can reach the bin. Missed. No. No, obviously. Thermal <laughs> right, paste. Okay. So thermal paste. I will grab some. So I think. Have I put any on the table? I have not. So I think we've got some. Oh. Right. Do you want Corsair or Noctua? Take your pick. Um. Corsair. Corsair. Good. Good choice. Some good thermal paste. So what you do is you'll just take this off. Perfect. Yeah. No, typical. Oh no, it's all over you. Whoops. You... Isn't this poison? I don't think so. No. Don't put it in your mouth, obviously. But it's not really I poisonous. You said you'd so... get this on your hand. No, I think this is not too bad. If you want to wear a plastic glove so you don't have to get thermal paste on your hand, that's fine. But if you do get it on there, obviously just wash your hands, rub it off. Should be fine. Right. Again, I'm not a, a you know, a skin, Where am I putting it? A skin expert, so... 
Dermatologist. Dermatologist, yeah, one of those. So Around okay. the perimeter. What, what I'll do here, thermal paste coverage is a very a very big topic. Don't squirt that at me. It's a very big topic. Everybody has their own method. So I'll leave you to do what you think. Okay, but I'll, what am I trying I'll to do? Stick it. that down. So what you're trying to do is basically just have some nice even coverage over the processor so that when you stick that down, this paste spreads nice and easily and helps the heat transfer through to the liquid cooler. Okay. So I'll let you do your method. This could end up badly. Okay. I feel like I'm icing a cake. Let me on the, uh, the GoPro so you can have a look what's going on here. Hmm, that's a, an interesting method, I would say. Okay. Okay, that is... Um, yeah, do you want to put the lid back on? That is certainly uh, an interesting method. What's wrong with that? I'm not going to complain, not going to criticise. I guess the the only slight <laughs> challenge we might have, so hold on, hold on. The only slight challenge we might have here is because it's around the edge, it might just bulge out. So really what you generally want to do with the AMD processor is just put a bit of a blob in the middle, maybe put a bit kind of a third of the way along. There you go. Hello, hun. Line up the holes. Perfect. So now what you want to do is you want to grab your thumb screw and you want to secure that into position. So if you grab your thumb screw, start with the bottom one because my finger's in the way, put whichever one you prefer. And basically you want to try and compress those screws. What are you what are you telling me to do? So you want to screw it in. So grab I the am. screwdriver if you want. Grab a you said it was a thumb screw. Yeah it is, but it's actually got a spring on it, so you might need a bit more force than the thumb. No, you want to grab the big screwdriver. There you go. And then what you can do is you can just drop it on. Put a fair bit of pressure and just screw it into position. There you go. I'm trying to drop this in the power supply now. Mm. No, 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 don't. <laughs> oh, you've dropped it on the floor. <laughs> there you go. So now you can start screwing it. So you can put some pressure down. So make sure that the screwdriver gets in. Yeah, put some pressure down and you'll probably start feeling the bite. Can you feel a bite in? Oh, I like this one. Perfect. Can you feel a bite in? Very so, whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. Right. So, if you want to back off a little bit now, so what you want to do is put not too much pressure on one side, because obviously you have to get the other side on, and if you put too much pressure on one side, it's basically just going to raise up the other you side. You need two people for this. Yeah, this, I'll be perfectly honest, this AMD method is a little bit, um, a little bit difficult in my opinion, this mounting method. Uh, but, you know, individual preference, and Maybe I'm the only one who needs two people. You probably all do it on your own. No, I find it quite difficult as well, to be honest. Well, you've never asked me to help you before. Um, so what you want to do is you want to back off on the first one a little bit because obviously you've got a high pressure on the first one that's just trying to resist. There you go. So now try it again. But I don't understand where these screws are actually going to. So basically, if you have a look, they've got a spring. So oh, they're spring loaded yeah. and then they're screwing in. Yeah, perfect. So you put it on there. I'll grip it into place for you. Grab your screwdriver. Stop. Screw it. There you go. Can you feel a bite in at all? No. No. Okay. Keep trying. Feel a bite in at all now? Oh, maybe a little bit. Ah, perfect. So now what you want to do, they go on the other side now. Oh, I was expecting so, to go all the way down. No, so you want to try and tighten, tighten them quite evenly. And this is important when you're doing a CPU cooler, is you want to try and tighten the sides quite evenly, just so it just makes it a little bit easier. one hand with a screwdriver? Uh, probably. Whatever's comfortable for you. I, I use yeah. two. Where I was comfortable. Stab my thumb. Yep. <laughs> there you go. So again, don't over tighten. There's no need to over tighten. Uh, I like to tighten, tighten it hard. That's fine. You don't over tighten it because obviously there's just no need to. Perfect. So. Look, it didn't. Oh. Uh, what? What's wrong? It didn't splodge everywhere. Uh, hopefully not. Well, we'll test the. We'll test to see if it works. So. So at this point, what you want to do next clean, now... Clean this first. So, yeah, if we just remove some of the fingerprints, perfect. Well done. And now if we flip this around, so what you can do at this point... I think we should point, put this back in now. Yeah, if you want to do that. So what you want to do is you just want to move the cables just so they... Push that in. Oh, wait, perfect. wait, 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 wait. So There's this, a message. What does it say? Check for cable and tube. Do not force shut. Okay. So just move the tubes out of the way. Just that. Go I'm definitely oh, forcing it shut. Right, don't force it. There you go. So we just move the tubes. Try again. Is that... No. So no. We'll forcing. just have a look where it's interfering. So can you see where it's interfering? 
It's over, over on the... It's that one there. Which one? Ah, USB 3. It's always the big fat USB 3 cable. Always a pain. Right. I feel just like I'm out. sitting on my suitcase. So yeah, just about to go on holidays. Bring it back <laughs> up a sec. So just move these cables out of the way. So this is why we need to do good cable management. Have you got an... Oh, what about one of these? Oh yeah, okay. Good idea. So if you put that through the gap, just tie it. Good effort. Put it down through first, yeah. <laughs> just make sure you bend this out of the way now so it doesn't interfere with any of the fans. That should be absolutely fine. Yep, good job there. <gasps> this is actually my computer. Well done. Yeah. Good cable management too. There you go. And let's try again. Don't bang it. Don't don't oh. don't bang it. I think you were doing it in a bag. No, 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 no. <laughs> well I banged but, it. You no, banged stop it. Bang, stop banging the case. This is <laughs> No, it's fine, it's absolutely fine. Right, so. If you want to have a look through, you should see all your nice components. Can you see any interference in there? Are you happy with that? No, I'm really happy with everything. Perfect. Let me have a quick look, see if I'm happy with it all. Well, have we finished? No, we've not finished. We've still got a little bit more to do. I was thinking that was very quick. So, yeah, I'm just going to move some of these cables, just reduce some of the tension, just a little bit of tension on there. Um, but it all looks very, very good to me. I think you've done a good job, Jazz. Very yeah. impressed. Fantastic, so we're absolutely happy with that. Tuck some of your cables out of the way if they're not used. Fine. Next up, here comes the big dog, the graphics card. So, Can first things first. RTS? Well, we'll have a look in a second, but first things first is we've got a riser cable here because of this case, so we're gonna have to slot the riser cable. Well, that means basically it's just an extension. So we plug that into the motherboard and it means you can plug the graphics card in somewhere else. So, oh, oop, it's <laughs> lovely. So if you want to do it that way. Oh, it's got a cap on it. Yeah, so if you take the plastic cover off and just plug this in, it shouldn't need too much force. So it's going to come along here. You're going to turn it. Oh. Yep. There you go. Not too much force. Just make sure you line it up properly with the notch because there's a notch kind of closer to one end than the other. I'm trusting you because I can't see what's going on. But full faith that you're going to do Always a fantastic trust job. Full faith. That sounded like a good <laughs> latch. Well done. <laughs> We're ready to install the graphics card. So, you've got a choice to make. We have, if we put this one there. Where does the graphics card go? So the graphics card, this time now, goes in this big empty slot. So can you see this slot here? That's called a PCI Express slot. We'll plug the graphics card in there. We'll route some power connectors. And we're basically, should be, done. And then we can put it on. We can, we have the moment of truth. So at this point, and then I'll go <laughs> Hopefully not. So tidy up the desk. No, let's get the graphics card. Okay, okay. So we're gonna put those bits down. So there. we've got. So this is okay, the first one. All right. So if you wanna just. So this is a Radeon. Yeah. If you, I think you can read on the back. Watch that piece of form there. AMD Radeon. Oh, 6800 XT. Exactly, so this is one of the new RX 6800 XT graphics cards. Really good graphics card, excellent for 4K gaming. Or, your other choice is this equally big card. Does the, 30, does the 3070 and the 6800 mean anything? Yeah, so the 6800 XT, that's the model number. AMD is the company that makes the, uh, the actual graphics yeah, card. Well, yeah, I know that. Yeah. But so I mean, obviously this good is... Unboxer. This is what? I meant, does 6800 mean it's better because it's a lot more than 3070? Okay, just question. Uh, do you know, that's actually a really good question. No, that's not really. Think. So, model names are actually genuinely. Let me help you. Ooh. Okay, there you go. Damn. Just watch you don't knock that one over. Maybe I'll throw some more stuff out of the way. So, this is a. So, Model names are genuinely really confusing. Best bet is just to check feedback and check reviews for which is actually faster because even though 6800 is higher than, for example, 3090, that doesn't mean the 6800 being a higher number is faster. So check the reviews. Okay. So, right, so do you need to pick this one up for you? Yeah. You pick that one up. So here we've got two cards to choose from. Can I have a look? Yeah. So which one do you like the look of? This one. You like the AMD one? Yeah. Okay. I think that's personally a good choice. I think the 6800 XT is a really good card. Now, I will address quickly the GPU shortage at the moment. Hopefully, we can, um, in the future, actually be able to buy graphics cards 
right now, obviously, we've just we're fortunate that we've got Isn't these on pay? hand. No, so they're basically sold out everywhere, and they're absolutely ridiculously priced. There's two here. There's two here. Yeah, you're very, very fortunate. Very <laughs> fortunate. So yeah, I think we owe James one of these back at one point. So yeah, he's got it booked well, in for another back, project. Back available then. Who knows? Who knows? But hopefully, the graphics card situation does improve soon because it's a bit disappointing at the moment. Is it like but flower? Fingers crossed. Flower gate. Flower gate. Oh, at the beginning of the um, the the term that we will not name on camera for fear of the YouTube algorithm punishing us. Flower the, pasta. Yeah. So you when you I'm couldn't when you couldn't buy anything, including toilet roll, back yeah. in March 2020, it's a bit like that. It's just yeah, basically a global shortage because everybody wants graphics cards. So you picked the 6800 XT. I'm going to pick this one just because it looks prettier. What do you think about the design? Do you like it? Sure, it reminds me of a car. A car? It looks like a car, doesn't it? Not, <laughs> well, the, not the shape of it. I don't know. Like These look like alloys. Alloy wheels. Okay. <laughs> I'm not seeing the resemblance. Really? But I will, I will go with you. No cars have tyres. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Yeah, okay, fair point. Fair Where point. is that? I wouldn't want those as my alloys. No, please don't drop that. Please don't drop that. Please don't drop that. It's quite heavy, actually. Please don't drop it. Please it could don't drop, drop it at any moment. Please, no, seriously, please don't <laughs> drop it. Slippery right, man. there you go. Let me put it back here. Right, see, let's pop this in then. Yeah, so first thing you do is you're going to remove the cover. So that's basically just a PCIe slot cover. And then what you're going to do... You're making is, such a mess. No, we're not. So you're basically just going to push this into the slot. So I might drop this. We need to see if that fits. Again, you don't need too much. How much is this Oop, then? Elbow me in the head. <laughs> right How much now. is this? Uh, many, many pounds How right much? now. How much? Uh, it's pro I, well, you can't buy it, but if you could buy it somewhere in the order of probably a thousand pounds. Really? Expensive prices. Realistically, it was yeah. meant to be kind of in the 600 or so pound range. Who so, reviewed it? So Dom reviewed this for us. Check out our full review. He's really impressed with the 6800 XT. Does really Dom good graphics card. Does think it looks card. like alloys? You'll have to ask him. If you think it looks like alloys, Dom, Dom you know, comment down below. If you don't think it looks like alloys, just don't comment. <laughs> I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Jasmine won't be offended, I'm sure. I will. Okay. So have you lined that up correctly? So you basically want to line I'm up having the, trouble here. the gold connectors with the slot and then push it in with minimal insertion force. Perfect, that sounds like a good click. Whew. Very well done. Yep, fantastic. So oh, now. That looks really pretty, doesn't it? I'll have a look in a second. So now they what we need to do. They smaller. They do, so you can get These graphics, graphics cards. graphics cards are quite big. Yeah, so you can get them different sizes. This is quite a big one, but thankfully the NZXT case takes it. We could have used a bigger one. James said he had a bigger one that could have been used, but it was just too big. So make sure you check out which size graphics card your case can take when you're specking your build and just ask for help and ask and check for some reviews if you're a little bit confused there but so you know what this size is fits. this so this is basically a three fan cooler and it's about two and a half slots so that means it's about two and a half slots thick so that's something to bear in mind so what you want to do now is you want to find two screws because we need to screw this graphics card in i believe yes two screws oh i think it might be these two uh, yeah, I think you're right. So two thumb screws, two screw holes. Let me just check that. Yeah. Ah, there we go. So you want to do the do that one first because that's kind of loop around. Yeah, that's perfect. I can feel that. That's absolutely fine. And then you do this one as well. I don't like doing it very tight. Do you? No, you never need Ooh. to do it too tight, especially when your system heats up and cools down when you're running games. And you just don't need to over tighten things. There's no need to. It might get stuck. Again, I need a new fine. monitor now. Maybe that's the next one. If you want to see Jasmine choosing a new monitor, then just yeah, let us know in the comments section down below. Maybe we can uh, mm. go through things with that one. So, fantastic job there. I think the graphics card's installed, looking very good in my opinion. Really happy with that. Now, because this is a really powerful graphics card for 4K gaming, you need to plug in the power connectors. Okay, so we're fully built. I've grabbed us a power cable, I've plugged it in. Display port for the monitor, keyboard and mouse, just Complete potato quality. Oh, it's got McAfee on it. Oh, no, just absolute potato quality. Got a better mouse. Well, we haven't unfortunately, so maybe that could be a that could be an upgrade for the future. But anyway, I let's start. Yeah, let's start plugging things in. So I think the best way to do with this case is going to be to lean it over, and then I think you should be able to see all the ports down there. Is that correct? Aye, aye, Captain. Aye, aye. Right. So going to so plug in your, your keyboard. It's upside down. You are. Alright, we'll just do the other way. 
keyboard. Keyboard. There's inside this, so if you slot this down, there's a little USB adapter inside. We put that on the front panel if you want. Nah, turn this to on. look ugly. Fair point, yeah. Okay, so we'll plug that in. We'll get the wireless antennas ready for you. Oops, I just. Have you hurt my, my baby? I thought I dented it, but it, it rubbed off, thankfully. So, what you can do now is these gold connectors, you can just screw those in. A little bit fiddly, but not too bad. So, I'm guessing you know where to put those, yeah. Kind of obvious, isn't it? Gold to gold. Basically, yeah. It's all about gold. Oh, let me see if I let me see if I can do a good peel now, shall I? Try and do this peel. Go on, you screw those in, I'll peel. That's a peel in my opinion. Is that supposed that. to be attractive? So now your power connector, if you want to plug that in. Should be able to plug that in. Power supply. Big, thick Don't pull cable. it too hard because I've got a bunch of extension cords under there. <laughs> you got, Where's it going? Yeah, where's the power supply? I thought it was around the back. Wait, where is the power supply? I thought it was on the end. I thought it was oh, like there. Oh, it's there. It's there. So if we put, if we just pick, oh, actually, so next, let's do the display port cables. So this is for your monitor. You might have HDMI if you've got a different graphics card or a different monitor. This is HDMI. No, it's display port, so it goes in. Just make sure your, your orientation is lined up correctly. Pick <coughs> one of the slots. Don't force it, because it's probably the wrong one if you're forcing it. No, you want to, so this is a really good point, actually. Same. So you've plugged it into the motherboard slot there. Because you've got a really high powered graphics card, make sure you plug it into the graphics card slot. And that's because you're going to get your powerful output from your graphics card so you can play games and do all that proper stuff. So there you go, we now, so if you want to grab this big display port cable out of my way, there you go. And now I think all we need is the power cable. So if you want to just plug that in down there. See down there? Oh. No, that. No, that's, that's fine. Sizzle. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I can see some signs of life. Can you? I can see some RGB. Oh, signs of life. Yeah. Oh, magnetic. Hmm. Hey, that's good. That's really good. Attract propel. Attract propel. Should we give her first boot? So if you wanna... Should we do it together? No, this is your system, and you've put all the. Whoops. And you've put all the effort. I'm just gonna plug your power cable in a little oh, bit more. Oh, look, my lights. Fun. How do you like the lights? So. Go on, give it a go. Fire it up. Three. Moment of truth. Two. I can cross my fingers. One. Is that working? That is the hum of fans. That sounds fantastic. So let's see if we get an output from the monitor. Cross our fingers. Oh, I love it. I think you've done a good job here. Oh, I think it's broke. No, 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 no. It's a good bit sound. slow. It's because it's first boot because you've just installed a bunch of new hardware. It will be a little bit slow initially, but you will get some signs of life on the keyboard sooner or later. So that's a good sign. You can see, there we go. Why does it say Aura? Because that's the motherboard, Gigabyte Aorus. Oh, and it's the monitor. Yep. It's a good brand, Aorus. We use it quite often. <gasps> Exciting. What should we search? Let's get our devices ready. So we have already installed Windows, obviously. If you haven't, then just grab a USB stick like this and install it yourself just on a clean SSD. Fingers crossed this works. Come on. Are we going into the BIOS? No, I don't think so. I think what it's doing is it just boots a few times. Just gets everything up to date with Windows with the new hardware. And then we should boot in. Let's cross our fingers again. Kikuru. Kikuru. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh. So first thing you want to do is right click on, on just empty space. Uh, just okay. This is old software that I've got installed. Right click, display settings. Ten eighty. No, even better. No, even better. Fourteen forty. Because it's a nice fourteen forty monitor. When we put it on the big TV, be four K. Ooh, nice. Very, very nice. Should we do some shopping? Uh, I haven't connected the Wi-Fi. Oh. <laughs> right, so I'll pause it there, connect the Wi-Fi, and we'll come back to it. All connected to the Wi-Fi, boot it up. Windows probably doing some updates in the background. You can load up Firefox and uh, I've lost give my it a mouse. go. Firefox, down there. Where's my mouse? Oh, yeah, okay, you can't see your cursor. Uh, I think you've it. Oh, you... there it is. Hello. There you go. Perfect. 
Hopefully. Works a charm. So I think the next step is we'll do a bit of housekeeping, like usual, Windows updates, tune some of the fan speeds, etc. Load up some games, Steam, Origin, etc. And then we'll plug it into the TV. And see how it does for gaming, yeah? Look, Sound good? That first one. Yeah, make sure you check that one out. I don't think I've got speakers on this monitor, so you oh, won't hear anything. <laughs> so we'll do that and we'll jump back into it. Yep. Yep. Happy? Yes. Very. Very happy? Very happy. Good. Very, very happy. Very nice looking build. I will say I do like this H1. So thanks again for all the feedback in the first video. Tell us we should probably use the H1 with the new riser. I'm so glad. I thought I was going to have to have the um, the other case, but this is so much better. Let's play some F1 2020, shall we? Uh, Australia, Bahrain, circuit. How about um, Singapore? Spain. Spain. Okay, let's go Spain. There you go. Uh, yeah, well, it's all this. Start session. Let's go. Start session. Let's go. Yeah, you do. We played before. Let's go. Just triggers. <laughs> Just press the triggers. All will be fine. System's nice and quiet, isn't it? I like it. All right. Especially game at 4K here. Which one's so, me? Uh, I don't know. You might. Be, you're. You're the bottom. <laughs> Oh, that's very loud. Yeah. 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 Thanks for not going. Press the triggers. It's not working. Oh, really? What? <laughs> Mine didn't go. The controller disconnected. What? We'll restart here. Okay. Let's go. Oh, yes, I'm beating you already. I ain't doing good with this. Uh oh. This is because this really high sensitivity. Oh, this is not a good start. You crashed already. Oh. oh, yes, I'm in the lead. Right, I think you have to reverse. Should we restart this race? I've been disqualified. You've been disqualified already. Right, let's, uh, let's restart this session, shall we? It's because of this controller. It's the controller, is it? Do you want to swap controllers? I give you the good one. It's a start race. Right, mm. just take take it easy it's now. Just in the back already. Yeah, fair point. No You have to use the joystick to move, but just find movements. Try not to crash into people. Hey, you doing well now. Oh no, I fell off the track. You spun again. Spin a lot. I need a steering wheel. Oh, I don't know where I am. Actually, it's a good point. Maybe you do need a steering wheel. Where am I? What? Someone's happened to me again. What's the remote? Just the controller, okay. Maybe, maybe you're better with a keyboard and mouse here. Okay, so this is running really nice and smooth. 60 FPS, 4K, clean as you like. I'm back on track. There you go. The okay, system's quiet. Alright, oh, done. Okay, you've done a good job there. I think we'll call that a victory for me. I'll try again. Okay, let's try again. Do you, do you want to go press? Do you press? There you go. Do you want to go front? Which one do you press? You press the trigger. So this one to go, this one to like decelerate, and this one to move. But small movements on the joystick. So you're, the, am I now? you're the top screen now. Press A. I thought it was the top screen last time. No, it was the top screen last time. So now you're at the front. So just have a nice easy movement on the trigger, on the on the joystick. Joystick's only really for left and right. Oh, is that you just crashed into everybody? Oh, I can't do this. I think we should play another game. Right, okay. Maybe Rocket League, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you did well. You did very well. I'm rubbish at gaming. Well, there you go. Got a nice system to practice with now, yeah? I just... I'm not... I'm not gentle now. Okay, we'll give it another go. Let's try a different game, yeah? There you go, you play some Rocket League. I'll be your scout. Is that you who scored? No. No? Okay. Where am I? Am I you pre press A to skip. So you press A, you can skip it. <clears throat> there you go. Let's try and score. You played Rocket League before. Yes, I am. I'm not really... 
They all go faster than me. Yeah, if you hold B, it boosts. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Ah. If, if you press A, it jumps. There we go. So you want to like boost and then jump into the ball. If you like press B into somebody, into the opposite opposing team, <gasps> you can like crash them. Okay, you can drive up the walls if you want. If you boost into one of the orange cars, you can uh, crash them. <gasps> I think I just hit it. You did something, I guess. Oh. <gasps> Go on. <laughs> Steady on. Did I get it? Yeah, well, you're trying to score into the goal, though. Oh. I actually don't know which goal is yours. Um, I'll go for an own goal. Yeah, don't go for an own goal. Yes! Did I hit it? Um, maybe. I think you helped. You certainly helped. Thank you for watching our build video of building Jasmine's first ever own custom gaming PC. How do you think it went? I think it went really well actually. I think mm. it was a lot easier than what I thought it would be. <laughs> but it was obviously much better to have you tell me what to do, to help with some finer things. But I don't think I had too much help. No, I think you did a very good job. So I think that's a fair point. It, if you want to build a PC and you are a novice, hopefully this video has just helped you see that even quite a complicated build like this, so a small mini ITX build, is perfectly doable for just a brand new user. All you need is a few steps of guidance. Hopefully this video helps you out there and you'll be on your merry way. So. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. Oh, you're doing yourself a disservice. You did a good job. I am very clumsy. Oh, you did a good job. You but I've learnt, new, I've learnt new things. I've just built a computer. Almost killed a power supply and electrocuted me along the way. But other than that, I'm I think still you, did, standing. you did a fantastic job. And I think you've built a really nice PC. So this is going to be powering through some 4K frames pretty soon. Editing some video. I think you're going to put it to work, aren't you? I'm doing some work. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So let us know what you think in the comment section down below. If you want to see more videos like this with different pieces of hardware, make sure you let us know. Really fun doing this and hopefully it has helped out some of you novice users who want to build your first system like this and you want to be nice, compact, premium, living room, gaming PC. And we've not argued. Of course we haven't. It's very smooth, I think you did a fantastic <laughs> job. Great choice of hardware, really happy. Subtle bit of RGB coming through, I think you did a good job, well yep. done. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching, we'll catch you in the next one. Like, subscribe, do all our YouTube stuff. Check out the Kickeroo website, really helps us out. Buy a cool t-shirt like this one. See you next time.